What's in your drawers? Welcome back to my golf shop. Jim McClary, Most Water Certified Club Maker, Club Fitter. And if you would, hit that bell. And that way you'll get more of these videos when they drop. Why to ask you what's in your drawers? Well, with the COVID thing, everybody staying at home, us being kind of locked down, it's given me some opportunities to go through and basically straighten up the shop. All right, in addition to what's in the drawer series, we're also going to start up live streaming. We probably get on board with the rest of it. Now it's video with podcasting. So I don't know what we're going to call it. Live streaming seems to be the best thing. So we're jumping on board. So we're going to start on Monday right here. You see it? We're going to start Monday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 17.30 for the people that use military or European time. 17.30 Eastern Time. And we're just going to talk about club making, right? Club making, club fitting. Let's get both of them in there. Club making, club fitting, golf topics. They're all, they're all in play. Plus, we can talk about what we found in the drawers. <laughs> so if you get that opportunity, join me this coming Monday, and we'll see you then. So we're going to have a, not an, a radical change, but more of a cleaner, less encumbered look because club makers are extraordinary pack rats, right? We are big time pack rats. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right now, what you see is right here. I got to clean this up. I got some coin matting, right? And coin matting is it's a plasticky rubber type material that you normally find on floors garage floors, industrial floors, because it, it, it can take some abuse. It's very, it's very dense, but you can tell it's very flexible to go over lumps and whatnot. Well, I tend to use it to protect the tops of my counters or tops of my workbenches. You can use it to do the same thing for you. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to clean up this area. I'm going to put down my new coin matting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get into one of my drawers. And we'll talk about what's in there and maybe there'll be some historical significance. Maybe there'll be some things that, you know, we want to, that we'll talk about later. And if it really turns out good, what I want to really do with you guys is go on a, uh, a live stream and we'll go through one of these things and we'll just talk about it. Or if you guys have any club making questions or, you know, just want to shoot the poo about golf since we've basically all been shuttered in. So let's get started and let's get cleaned up. So as I'm sure you guys have figured out, I hold this thing down with some double-sided grip tape, and that's the easiest way to go. So when you get your coin matting, it comes in a roll. Just like carpeting, you've got to let it relax. So I've had it set down uh, upside down with some weights on it to keep it flat, and so in everything to stick. So now what we have to do is peel off all this tape and get it all nice and clean, let it dry thoroughly, and then put more tape back down. All right, so cleaning up the, the, the top wasn't so bad because it was protected by the coin mat. However, there was an area right here where I had my, 
my puller that it runs with hydraulic fluid and every once in a while there'll be just a little that escapes and hydraulic fluid uh, very slippery very stain like very it just gets into everything so it takes a little while to clean that one up it took two or three passes now I got the coin mat on here and what I've done is I've cut it to length already that was pretty easy from point A to point B and you and across there now <coughs> This thing is a two foot wide mat. Well, the front end, you know, two foot will take me right to the edge. And what'll happen is eventually is I'll just keep hooking it and I'll keep pulling it up. So what I do is I pull it back because on cabinetry, the, the, the front nose of it's a little bit rounded, then it goes into a flat and then it goes into the backing. So I'm getting it to right pat, just right behind the nose. So what I have found going forward is that if you guys are old enough to remember this kind of a ruler, I used to do architecture and this the width of this guy happens to be just about perfect so what I've done is and you guys saw it is I drew a line the, the width of this thing and that should be more than enough now two ways of cutting this guy you can use scissors better have some pretty strong hands but the, it will get through it or you can use a straight razor stuff that we've all seen before now in this particular one, I drew the line because that way I know if I'm getting off or not, or getting off of the line. And so now I can use that same ruler as a guide going forward and, and running it. So I'll be running it along this way, not this way. And then that way I will, if I make a mistake, I can come back and trim it up with the scissors later. So let's get to trimming. too bad and didn't leave the line too bad it's like coloring right <laughs> so now I get a strip like this and uh, which is going to be useless so this one's going into the trash all right so we flip it back over and see how we did yeah that's what I'm looking for okay now as we found out as I looked at it that the thing wasn't exactly cut square because the circles give it away right there's in a pattern Started out with some nice big circles and ended up with about a half a circle. So it's not going to, it's hard to see, but I think I got it straightened back out. So we're going to be in pretty good shape. So how do we do this? Well, we start halfway with some tape. Layer it in here. Now, you know, I know I didn't measure, but what I can do is I can overlap corners, which is what's going to happen here. Now, if you're, if you're talented and you can get a whole big long line, more power to you. I just like taking it in chunks. And that way I don't have a GCE. And for those guys that were in the military, GCE, you know what that means. Put it down the box, put it in the show notes. And at some point about halfway, I'm gonna go this way just to help it keep sticking down. Let's kind of bring it into spot. There we go. And now we go the other way. you can see right here where it wants to come up and I might put more tape down in here but it's it's still resting so that's going to be a good thing and then we will try and prevent it from coming up anymore that ought to help keep it <laughs> set down Let's 
solid as a rock. All right, so the next thing is we've got to put all our stuff back. Now the, the real trick is to try and evaluate what it is that you really, really need. Do I need a set of old drill bits put back? Probably not. It means this guy's gone. Going back, I had paint for when I was paint filling and I had different, and what you gotta do, shake them and make sure that they're still liquid before you decide to put them back. Wipe them down, take some dust off, and let's go back to work. So when we're doing some cleaning, I found some stuff at a family dollar called Totally Awesome. Not too bad, it's a buck, right? And everything's a buck. And the refill is like three bucks. So part of what's in the drawer, the uh, I did a real quick thing on Twitter and it was using a what I call a fishing putter. And if you look, it's a putter on the end of a fishing, with a fishing pole or a fishing reel on it. And I said I would show you guys how to make it. Well, I'm, I'm going to shortcut this, right? And so what I've done is I went up to Golf Works and they had a few heads left over. And that's I just ended up picking some up. So what you do is you get yourself a simple double, double bend putter shaft and you glue it in. And that's what you get there. Now, you, uh, now what you have to do after that while you're gluing it in, before you glue it in, you got to go get some heat shrink, right? and you want about an inch to a three quarter inch heat shrink and you put those on and you slide them on the on the shaft before gluing it in and why do we do that that's because the the back end of the shaft the back end of the shaft is too big to throw these on so you slide those on first let this dry cut it to the length that you want put on any putter grip that you want all right because it's basically it's a toy so at this particular point in time and then what you do is underneath side of here is you glue this down to the shaft. Now, if you're getting serious about it, you want to rough up the shaft area, rough up underneath here, glue it down, tape it with some electrical tape, slide this over top of it, and then heat shrink it down and hold it in place. Now what you want it is, you want it in line with the putter grip, right? In line with the putter grip. Then you come down to the you come down to the eyelet. Now I went to Walmart and got some eyelets. And that's what reminded me of what's in the drawer. Because I had some heat shrink and a couple of eyelets. So if you go to the if you go to Walmart or whatever, one of the stores, and you get one of the cheapest rod or one of the cheapest reels, it might cost you about eight or nine bucks. And then you get an eyelet or an in an in piece. All right, now it doesn't, does it have to be one? No, it just made sense because it's at the end of the line. And what I tend to do is I tend to smash that end down. I use just a little no bounce hammer and, and you slice them down. Now, there's the heat shrink. That's what reminded me of it. There's that size and then there's that size. See the difference? Okay. What you do with the eyelet is you cock it to the side so it's gonna be looking right over the golf ball. Again, rough it up a little bit, a little bit of glue, a little bit of tape, and heat shrink and if you look in there you can see it all all right so then what do you do well then you get the what you do although it's in the wrong spot because it's a different kind but what you do is you pull the string you pull it through here and you put it in a golf ball and you can take any golf ball you like and you drill a small hole in it and then what you do is you take a a screw a smaller screw which is just a regular you know, it just has to be a regular smaller screw. It doesn't have to be, in fact, you don't want it to be too big. And you run it up in there once just to get it the, the size of the hole. And then you take this guy out, you put the fishing line in, screw it down nice and slow until you get there and let it seat all the way down so it's part of the, part of the outside of the ball. And then you're clicking and you're putting just like we were before in the video. So there you go, that was for us. So let's look in the drawer, right? We talked about looking in the drawer. 
And so we, I was digging some stuff out and why I keep some of these things is just crazy. I had a, uh, here's a Cobra J Speed driver. Cobra J Speed driver, 350 cc's. Remember that number? 350 cc's. Has some, uh, some cur conca concavity, concavity in it. And I guess that was what the speed was. And it still has the tip weight in it from when somebody was putting that in there. A nice little gem. I'm not sure why I've got that. Another one is, if you guys remember Bob Tosky, I mean, he's still alive. He's in his 90s. Quite the hell of a teacher. Uh, had his own had his own line. And they had it. It was carried at Golf Works. It was a solid line. Had a couple of irons, a putter, wedges, the whole nine yards. This is the T5 forged beta titanium and it was massive at 400 cc so let's keep that in mind now this is a lefty and one's a righty but look at here difference 350 400 there we go faces okay and soles here's a real historical gem for you, you guys ever see one of these has a win on it. <laughs> oh, this one goes way back. This thing is probably, it's easily 10 to 15 years old, if not maybe more. So what this was is a replacement in the original, I think they're w, the W series, the original wind grip had this. It was, remember the blondes and they had blacks and whatnot. And what it, wind is a two-piece grip. It's an underlisting with this on it. Now I believe they might just slip it on or they wrap it around anyway. It's a two-piece grip. In the day, it would wear out pretty fast because of the way that this was made. And what we would, they would send us replacement pieces and we would tear off the outer coating on it and clean it up and we'd put this back in its place. What we would also do is for big butt uh, golf clubs, big butt shafts, they, you know, there was many models out there. There was a couple more popular than the others, but, you know, I believe it was TaylorMade had one, the, you know, the bubble shaft, that was a big, big butt one. And there was also another, can't remember the name of it, but it was a, it was one that had uh, most a gold inlay and it had a huge so, uh, steel big butt shaft. Anyway, the, the rubber would wear out on that and people wanted a softer grip and we would put these on there and just wrap them around however low that they wanted that I could go with this. And then what you could do is if you wanted to change sizes or even feel, you would layer the edges on top of each other and they would make these bumps on it and would give it a really cool feel. Some older stuff, we had an SRT head cover, Odyssey SRT two ball. And that was a bigger putter, a uh, bigger putter mallet. And it was made for higher MOIs and this was just what the head cover. You know the shocking thing is I think I still have the head and I think it's in my freezer. Alright here's a, to keep even going. One of the original Toski heads, boom. And that's a driver. Right this has got to be in the 275 range. There you go. 400 or this is 350 and this is a driver just look how much difference that is. It's got to be in the 300 to 275 range. And for those of you who ever had those clip-on that need numbers for clip-ons, I got bags and bags of those. And the last, this is, a, this is one of my favorites. If you look at this, how many guys have you seen? Remember these. Maxfly Australian Blades. All right, this is a nine iron. And this one's done very, very well. The Australian blade was, was what put Maxfly really on the map, right? These blades were awesome. So what happened to those? Well, you know, it's been a while. These things are very, very lo uh, low in their loft, but uh, Maxfly's since gone out of business. There was, a, I walked in there one day and there was a shelf full of these things in the raw, meaning that they had not been polished. They, had, they were all just like they would come off of the original forging. They still even had edges on them. It was a pretty spectacular find. So what I did, I took them all. I bought every bit of them, and I did it in order to practice my grinding. Now, what these were were probably uh, heads that didn't pass inspections when for size or weight or something. 
And I wasn't really interested in that. I was more interested in trying to learn how to polish. So this is one of my first, uh, that one being an original. And this one was one of my first attempts at trying to do it. And I even threw a little grind in there, killed the leading edge a little bit, just having some fun with it. Here's one more. I was just kind of experimenting with rounding toes at this one. This one's still a nine iron. And you notice I took a little bit more off in here. I rounded the toe a little bit. See, it's not, I took a little bit more off than I probably should have right there. And killed the leading edge again. Got it nice and shiny, but this was all, I mean, it was a really dull silver. Last one and then we'll get out of here. There you are, a McGregor. And this is when McGregor was actually McGregor. Uh, this is a Pro CM cavity muscle back, basically, an MT series. And this is before they got sold off. Quite the great, the Forge Clubs, actually the McGregor line was actually pretty good. It's, uh, it's just a shame that it never got promoted. Had a real opportunity during one of the master or one of the British Opens. The shark was just having a day and just failed to promote it. Just failed to do it. Alrighty, so that's what that is. That's going through that. And we're just a couple of topics, and that's really what I want to do on some of the live stream. So if you guys see this, what I want to do is on a uh, on a Monday, we'll do it in the afternoon when everybody's back from if you're essential, and we'll do it in the afternoon, say five five thirty. I'm gonna say five thirty ish. And uh, we'll get started with that, and we'll go through some drawers, and we'll talk some golf clubs. As always, let's see your scores go low. Man, i got to get rid of some, put some of this stuff back in.